we're doing a part two to the fabulous, awesome tips for any newbie getting into vinyl coming from really great collectors. Some long-term, others diving in and seeing what they've learned. So I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of each person, their personality and all of that, but I'm also gonna deliver you the goods, honey, because of course they all have that wonderful knowledge to ensue on you wonderful new collectors out there. And hey, maybe even the old collectors, um, and by old, I mean long-term collectors. Maybe you might learn something new, who knows? Who knows? Nothing wrong with knowledge, darling. So let's dive in and see exactly what they have to say and call it a day, okay? This is mistakes that someone wishes that they could have avoided. Things they wish they knew prior to so that they could have avoided it. Well, here we have it. Let's start this off with someone who's just magnificent. Uh, a person who I discovered when I entered into the YouTube vinyl world. And my goodness, I was really happy that I did. But my goodness, he is amazing. He is knowledgeable, he's amazing, and he just, he's got the ear. Let's dive in. Hello, vinyl guru, and hello to your channel. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you asked a very interesting question, I must admit. What is one of the greatest problems, the greatest mistakes I made when I started to record collect? Even though I was probably not even thinking of collecting records yet. But I do want to give some advice in this sense to your subscribers, to whoever is watching this video, because I think it is something very important, which I also underline always in my channel. What am I talking about? I'm talking about knowing your records. You have to know the sources. You have to know, first of all, that all records made today come from digital files, digital sourced, masters. But if we're talking about the past century, the best recordings are there, a lot of them were, obviously are, analog, were, are obtained from master tapes. They were, the original pressings. But the ones today, unfortunately, it's very, very rare. So I think since they're not so honest in telling us, we have to be informed. We have to understand what are, from what is sourced our favorite albums. So just don't buy a normal reissue because in most cases, the audio quality is not gonna be that good. And sometimes a lot of albums are pressed from CDs, oh yes. So, we really have to pay attention, do some research. There are some websites that can tell you it's important to, to find out and try to get to purchase analog sourced AAA records. Those are the best of the best. And if you don't want to spend too much on high uh, audio file reissues, just go for the originals. Bye guys. This next one here, he just, he's got it going on. He's got it going on because he's really devoted to vinyl. Yes. It's got a real devotion to vinyl. Hey everyone, it's Michael from Devoted to Vinyl, and I wanna thank the Vinyl Guru for allowing me to come onto her channel and talk about my biggest mistake that I made when I first got into collecting. Now, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this, and I think the biggest mistake that I made when I first jumped into vinyl is really not paying too close enough attention to the vinyl grading system. Now, when I first jumped into the vinyl hobby, I got really excited maybe a little too excited. I remember going into record shops and even going online on websites like Discogs and kind of buying anything and everything that caught my eye. And I think that's a really great idea for jumping into vinyl in general. I like the idea of being open to different genres, different music artists. I've actually found a lot of great artists that I've never heard before by just experimenting and kind of buying something that caught my eye, whether it was based upon what was on the album cover or maybe something in the liner notes. But at that time, I really wasn't paying too much attention to the condition of the record. It's not that I was buying records that were in bad shape, but I probably could have done a better job at being more discriminating. I probably should have understood 
that there was a reason why there's a 99 cent bin and instead of getting all of my records from there maybe just get one or two you know take it easy and overall do a little bit more homework to understand the difference between say a good or good plus record as opposed to a, a very good plus or an excellent or mid condition record i'm definitely happy with the records that i have in my collection but if i could do it all over again i probably would be a little bit more strict with the records that i purchased when it comes to the condition that they were in. Magnificent advice, darling. This next one is gonna be somebody who I've really watched for God awful too long. I love him, I just love him, I love his wife. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about at this point. This is Cherie and Frankie from Le Channel Sur Tisserie. <laughs> He's just one of the, the coolest. So down to earth, so cool. Um, and he's just got it going on. Here we go. All right, this is a good question. And I mean, truth be told, I really don't have many record collecting regrets because you do tend to learn from your mistakes or your missteps. But I suppose if I could go back and in and, and time, I would probably be a little more picky about the records I purchase, both in terms of condition and the actual albums uh, I acquire. So um, I'm not a big fan of the snap, crackle, and pop on records. I know some people say they like the snap, crackle, and pop. To me, uh-uh, no way. I like to minimize that as much as possible. So there have been times in the past for no good reason, really, where I bought albums in less than ideal condition. Nowadays, I try to buy minimum very good plus when buying used vinyl and of course i obviously try to shoot for near mint it's obviously as well not always possible depending on price and um and whatnot and scarcity of the record right i mean i suppose if a record is really scarce i'd be happy to get a vg version of it but again i just try to get the best possible um condition that i can because i don't like the snap crackle and pop and as well, there have been times in the past where maybe I've kind of bought into the hype maybe of a record store day. So you go to record store day on the big day and I may have bought more records on occasion than I intended. And some of those I never ended up really enjoying um, or maybe I listened to only once or twice. So uh, in retrospect, those kind of turned out to be a waste of my money. And I actually did a big purge this past summer and got rid of a lot of the records that I don't listen to a lot and maybe the ones that weren't in the best condition. So I've kind of remedied remedy this uh, in the last little bit. But again, if I could go back, it would probably be a matter of finding um, records in the best possible condition and as well being a little more selective about some of the vinyl I purchased just to make sure um, I'm, I'm laser focused on what I really want because in the end that leaves more money um, to purchase the records that you really want and that you're really going to appreciate. Vinyl Guru, thank you very much, Christina, for uh, asking me to do this question and for doing one of these videos again. Your channel rocks. So this next cat is so spunky and he's probably the most knowledgeable when it comes to the world of jazz. I really love him and I, I adore him, but he's got such a great variety. Great collection, but listen, great knowledge. What's up, y'all? Secretary Funk, back on deck just to drop a little bit of ism on you guys real quick. I've been asked by the vinyl guru to go ahead and share something with you all, maybe something or somewhere where I've gone wrong in my collecting. Something that I, if I could do over again, maybe I would do it differently. And my advice would be, where I went wrong, is I did not pay attention to the basics. And now, the basics, the, the kind of average albums are a little bit unattainable, or at least, I'm paying more now than I could have back in the day, just what, 10 years ago. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me on this. Let's say you want to collect some of those nice mid to late 60s psychedelic albums. Let's say you're a 20 some year old collector just getting into collecting and you want to, uh, you know, Aretha Franklin's album from back in the day, the early 60s. These albums are 55 plus years old and another handful of years, they'll be 60 years old. 
you being a 20 year old, by the time you're my age, which is 40 years old, these albums will be almost 100 years old. And what we've seen is that these things aren't getting any younger. They're antiquing like furniture. And just 10 years ago when I was collecting and I would see, you know, the Iron Butterflies, the um, <clears throat> Grand Funk Railroad albums, the Aretha Franklin albums. I mean, these things were like 10 for a dollar. But try to score one right now. One of those basic 10 for a dollar albums that you skipped over because maybe you had 30 bucks in your pocket and you wanted to just get that one $20 album that the flea market guy had instead of getting the whole handful of the basics. Um, you know, now those albums to get a nice collectible copy, whether it be mono or stereo, man, it's going to, they're starting, they're creeping up, man. They're starting to be $10, $15 each, $20 each. And if you have to buy a plane ticket from overseas, that's a $40 album right now. We're just 10 years ago. It was three. So my advice is to pay attention to the basics Get them while the get is good. Especially with the music now. The music's being issued on vinyl. Vinyl's dropping left and right. Especially this new music. Pay attention to your generation. Get these albums cheap. And if you can, if there's still albums that are old enough back from the 60s and the 70s that are still cheap, get them in. Because these albums are getting no younger. And we're starting to see that in the collecting that, you know, albums that were just really, really modestly priced just 10 years ago are no longer uh, modestly priced. Thanks to the younger generation for appreciating the music and wanting to have it on vinyl. That's the reason. But, you know, it is what it is. Well, here we have another Michael, okay? And this Michael, he's truly quite the poet. Yeah, he is. And you know what? There's a lot of plastic around him. Yeah, I'm talking about poetry on plastic. He's really interesting. The thing about him too is that he's also one of the youngest people I know that has a real devotion to classical music. He really knows his classical. But anyways, let's dive in and see what Mike had to say. Hey there vinyl community, it's Michael from Poetry on Plastic here. I want to thank the Vinyl Guru for including me in her collaboration video. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so the topic is, of course, uh, advice we would give to new record collectors that we wish we knew when we were starting out. The particular tip I wanted to discuss is one that uh, I think even seasoned collectors could use a little bit of advice on, and that's to buy the best copy of an album that you can personally afford at the time. Um, a lot of record collectors get into the habit or um, the trap of either wanting to or having to uh, rebuy copies of albums they already own because the copy that they bought first, they you know didn't know enough about the pressing at the time or they were just getting the cheapest thing in the store. And so, you know, either when they got more serious about collecting or pressings or when their stereo got better, they realized that the copy they had is a dud. And um, this is actually a really easy problem to uh, solve in the information age, in the digital age we live in, um, if you just do a little bit of homework beforehand. So if you have a record that you know you want to get, like let's say it's a copy of Black Sabbath's Paranoid or Led Zeppelin IV or something, there's a ton of information and in people out there um, who know about pressings and, and have heard different pressings, or there's forums online where people can talk about different pressings and different copies to compare. And um, you can learn a lot on there and you can make an informed decision on, on what's the most, um, you know, cost effective way to get the best pressing that you possibly can for that album so that you don't want to upgrade it later, um, which can be a, a big waste of time and money um, in the long run. And, you know, having a dud copy of an album uh, can actually discourage people from the hobby, um, either if the jacket is of poor quality or if the sound is harsh and compressed. Records are expensive and, and um, people aren't gonna wanna keep buying something that doesn't sound good or doesn't, isn't quality in your hands. So um, do a little research and, and get the uh, best pressing that you can personally afford at the time. One resource that I particularly use in this endeavor, um, I'm a big fan of the Steve Hoffman Music Forums because there's a lot of people on there that have a lot of different pressings and there's a lot of threads on there uh, talking about, you know, what's a good pressing to buy. If your budget is how much, you know, what's the best pressing of this album you can get. 
and you'd be surprised how much information is out there. So that's my advice to new collectors or even collectors that are already pretty deep into this is um, to, you know, do a little bit of homework because the information is out there. And, um, you know, that's the fun of this hobby is, is pulling from the knowledge base of other collectors and other um, experts that are out there. Uh, you know, it's, it's using the community to your benefit. All right, there ain't no party in this place without these cats. I know that the vinyl community would be a really dark place if it wasn't for these beautiful people. And these beautiful people, each and every individual is a character and a pizzazz of their own. They bring a different uh, light to the room. It's kind of like a Christmas tree and each little light and figurine creates this beautiful ensemble. And that is exactly these people right here. Spin me around store. I just can't say anything else but the world of you, darling. I really think you guys have this tight knit thing that I wish college degrees would be based on. Really, really needs to be studied. But anyway, dears, let's give it, let's get it. Let's get it. Give me the, give me the juice. The Vinyl Guru had a very important question for you. What's that? What are some of the mistakes you made when you were younger with collecting vinyl that you wish you would have known? The big major one is support your local record store. Growing up in a small town, we had two record stores on Main Street, Independence, and then one closed up in the 90s, the other one closed up in 2000, 2001. So now there's no more downtown Main Street record store there. If I had supported them, if we'd all supported them, they'd probably still be there. So I should have stayed out of Sam Goody. So you mean to tell me, if you don't spend a little bit of money in your local record store, they'll close? Yeah, if you don't support local business, who will? So support your local record store, your local downtown real indie record store. That's such a brilliant idea. That's why I married you. And if you don't know them, honey, well now you know. That is the party to be at. The best house party ever. Gotta love them, honey. Um, this next one is gonna be a darling that I really just adored the second I seen him. Uh, him and his girl are just exquisite. And you know, you can tell why they work well together. But the thing about him, this darling Mark that I'm gonna be talking to you about, um, really crushed my heart because I don't know why he doesn't have a podcast damn it he's got probably the smoothest voice ever awesome but boys and girls let's dive in and see what this collector has to say hey, hey vinyl, vinyl guru. guru thank you for the invite to do this this is Mark Andy Lees with Vinyl Crush and the question is what is the mistake we made early in our collecting career that we would give advice to other collectors now to not make the same mistake. And we're gonna talk yeah. about uh, inserts, posters, uh, inner sleeves. And like download cards. We used to just toss those aside and <laughs> they they never landed back with the album that mm -hmm. they were supposed to be with. Yeah. Um, and posters. Yeah. We used to hang up our posters. Uh, this is a cool poster we hung up from the band Crystal Stilts. And there's little, there's little, you know, staple marks in there. Yeah, yeah. We didn't realize that it might be a collectible thing to go with the record. So uh, now we save everything. Now we save everything. For example, we cut the little stickers off the cellophane, like this uh, record store day release, and we put it inside the record sleeve and save even that. Such a good album. And um, and and also when you're looking at uh, records from the past, uh, I you know, first started buying records that I listened to as a kid. And I got a hold of a first pressing of Santana Braxis, great album, really nice artwork and stuff. And I wasn't aware that it originally came with a poster. So I had to go back and find another copy with the original poster in mint condition. Um, so when you're going shopping for records from the past, make sure you know what originally came with them, whether they had inserts, order forms, posters, um, anything like that. Yeah, and if you get a new album, keep it all together because it'll be a collectible then. That's right. And one of the biggest mistakes I want to share with you that I made was when I came across this original pressing of the Beatles 
uh, with the Beatles. This is the original pressing Parlophone label from England. And uh, when I got this, I was so proud. I took it out of the sleeve and I put it in a nice, you know, collector's sleeve with a nice collector's inner sleeve. And I threw away the original inner sleeve. Duh. <laughs> and I had no idea. They're just pieces of paper that, you know, were old. And I had no idea that that could actually have value. Yeah. So make sure you know as you're as you're doing this collecting that it's not just the vinyl on the cover it's everything that comes with it that actually has value and if you take any advice from this video listen to this album nick cave nick cave great artist thank you guru thank we love you. you we love you the next one coming up here is a friend of mine from canada we've known each other for a long time he's really been a collector for quite a long time and He's going to he's gonna deliver the goods. He is. Hey, everyone. David Michael here, or a.k.a. Naz Nomad, whatever you want to call me. Um, if I had to go back in time and talk to my younger self, which would be really interesting, actually, um, as far as buying vinyl or vinyl in general, I would tell myself, uh, David, buy what you like, not what you think you should like. And there's a huge difference there. Don't buy what you think other people will think is cool. Uh, I used to go to record fairs, really early record fairs in my city, and I was young. I've been buying vinyl for a lot of years. Um, so I'd go when I was 11, 12, maybe even 13. I can't remember now. But I would be intimidated by some of the snooty vendors. I'd be afraid to buy, or, or I'd be afraid what they would say if I brought up what I really wanted to buy. So I would buy kind of things I thought people would think was cool. And, uh, and I regret it because there was a lot of things I, I left back that I, I probably should have bought. But, uh, and that's kind of a, a, a mantra to my life now is buy what you like, not what you think others uh, will think is cool because your collection will thank you. So I kind of keep that to, to this day is uh, um, I just buy what I like. I don't care what other people think. And uh, also one last thing I would tell myself, you know, David, very rarely is there a record so rare that you can't put something back if you think it's too expensive. Don't overpay for vinyl. Records are not that rare where you can't wait something out for a better price because I overpaid many, many times just for a couple weeks later to find it somewhere else for half that price. So anyways, take that for what you will. Uh, that's what I would tell my younger self. I mean, I could just keep complimenting everybody in these videos because and they just got it going on. They really do. They got it going on. And everything that everybody's saying is really pretty valid, which is exactly why I knew who to ask for this. They, I knew they would deliver the goods. And this next one is a pretty new vinyl collector, but I just really love her. I love her approach to vinyl collecting. I think she's really great. I think she doesn't have a snobby attitude towards it. I think she, she really makes you feel at home because she's taking you on that journey with you. And uh, she's just this young, fun, spunky Australian vixen. Here we go. Hello, it's Kira. I'm glad to be back on The Vinyl Guru. Two of the most important things that I have learned through my own record collection journey and things that I definitely wish I could tell myself as a younger collector. The first thing is be a sponge. Being a sponge is so important when it comes to learning as much as you can, not being close-minded. Act like a sponge and soak up all the wisdom from other people around you as well as as just be open-minded when it comes to your own experience and learning from your mistakes. You're not going to do things perfectly. There's always going to be mistakes involved. So the best thing you can do is rather than trying to avoid mistakes, just embrace them and learn from them. And secondly, the other side of that coin is to remember that you don't need to justify your actions. There is no correct way to record collecting. Everyone does it a little bit differently and it's important to soak up advice and wisdom but also it's important to remember your own individuality and to stick to your own guns so don't fret if you're doing things a little bit differently from someone else because there's not really any point to doing anything if you're just a clone of someone else i think that the differences between us all individually is just as important as the similarity that ties us all together which is our love for music so this next one y'all you don't even know. Okay? Don't even know. He has been my vinyl crush <laughs> for years. 
years. I've loved, I still love him. I'm sorry to his wife, but he's like my Al Pacino of vinyl. Um, many of you will probably know this man. I think it's safe to say he is the one of the main reasons uh, for the vinyl resurgence. I think he he's he he's been fighting the good fight for a very long time, and has some very good things to say right here. So the vinyl guru has asked me to make a short video for you and uh, give you a little bit of advice on not doing some of the things I did when I was a young record collector. Back before there were records, actually, we used to scratch music in the dirt. No, I'm just kidding. Um, one of the biggest mistakes that I made, it was a really bad mistake. Uh, I lived in Los Angeles between 1978 and 1986. That wasn't the mistake, although sometimes I think it was. That wasn't the mistake. The mistake was I went into a record store, an Aaron's Records on Melrose, and I encountered my first Japanese pressing, which was of the Beatles' Hey Jude album, and I bought it. It looked really nicely packaged and it had an OB and everything, and I played it, and I was absolutely astonished by the sound, especially the pressing quality and the quiet it, I mean, the pressing quality of those records, those Japanese pressings, are absolutely astonishing. And so, I started replacing all of my original British pressings, not all of them, but a lot, with Japanese pressings, and even American pressings with Japanese pressings, because I was in love with the pressing quality and the quiet and I wasn't paying attention to actually what the sound was. And the problem is most of those records actually sounded terrible because, for one thing, they were using God knows what as source material, copies of copies of tapes, who knows what. And then on top of that, they a lot of those records were mastered uh, with tape machines playback machines that did not have preview heads. So they were using digital delay lines, very low resolution, very low bit the digital delay lines. You were basically getting less than CD resolution on these records. But for some reason, I was so mesmerized by the quiet of the pressings, I didn't pay that much, and also the, the packaging quality, I didn't pay that much attention to it. And by the time I figured it out, fortunately, I hadn't get rid of my Beatles albums. I hadn't get rid of my... Well, I got rid of some of my Stones albums, my original British Stones albums. But the time that this all happened was when vinyl was going away. So I was able to recoup all of the records that I got rid of for under $10 a piece, including the Stones catalog on Decca. All of those records I got back on great-sounding original pressings for under 10 bucks, and recouped all the records in my collection that I had gotten rid of. And, of course, you can't do that anymore. So my advice to you, youngsters is country of origin for the most part. Not all the time, but for the most part. If it's a British band, a British pressing. If it's an American band, an American pressing. There are exceptions, like Led Zeppelin, which was, uh, even though it was a British band, it was they were uh, signed to Atlantic in America, and there are other records, other exceptions to the rule. But basically, country of origin are the original pressings you should look for. All right, that's my advice. And uh, I hope you take it. Don't get don't get mesmerized by the Japanese pressing business, okay? Well, jokes aside and all that gushy, crushy stuff aside, he's really the best. And this is exactly the reason why. He delivers the goods, he's very honest, doesn't hold back, and just has been holding this torch before all of you even realize the importance. Quite the man, honey. Well... There you have it. Links in the description down below for all of their channels. Really great people. I recommend them, obviously. So check them out and let us know, of course, if there was anything that we missed. If there was anything that you feel like a really great tip that you feel like we did miss, definitely write it down. Because, of course, 10 people cannot give it all, right? We can't. We can't. Especially in a little bit of time. So let us know. I'm sure anybody who is watching this video because they are thirsting for that knowledge are probably going to be scrolling down in those comments. So let us know. Hit those likes. Let us know 
subscribe if you haven't, and thank you. Thank you for joining the ride, Dare. More fun bits to come, but jam! That was a good one, honey. Oh my gosh. Jeez, yes!